it's open? No way, dude. N95 mask, because, you know, the vid might get you way out in the middle of the freaking Mojave. Two miles west of here, and I can see this place. Should I read it? I think you should read it. I'm two miles west of here, and I can see this place with binoculars. Welcome back to the second episode of the Mojave Road. Sit back, relax, and enjoy another video. What's going on you guys and good morning waking up here on the Mojave Road Camp Fallis really cool spot staying warm with the diesel heater enjoying some hot chocolate today we are gonna explore the Mojave Road a little bit more we're gonna stop at some cool places so stay tuned to see what we go check out today it should be pretty fun Never have I awoken in an area that has been totally burnt down, where only the skeletal remains of trees stand. This harsh landscape is a testament to nature's relentless cycle of destruction and renewal. Here in this scorched expanse, I find a metaphor for rebirth. As the first light pierces the horizon, casting shadows on the desert floor, I'm reminded that sometimes from the embers of our challenges, a new life emerges. The Mojave whispers the poetry of resilience, urging me to embrace the dawn of a fresh beginning, forgetting what is behind and straining towards what is ahead. On this trip, I carried an extra eight gallons of fuel with me, which was more than enough fuel to complete the Mojave Road. We're gonna enjoy some avocado bagel. Mmm. Much better than dinner last night. All right. Whoever makes it to Camp Phallic, there it is. On this cool rock table. All right, so. We're gonna finish packing up here and get on the road, get the adventure started. Let's go.
right, you guys. We're heading out of Phallic Rock. There's this random RV right here with this rock pile surrounding it. Maybe to block the wind for uh, some cool RV camping. I don't know. We're going to go check it out. There's also another little structure over here. Let's go. Let's go check it out. Firing. Let's go check it out. A little shack. Not sure what this is. There's the firing. Dude, is there a full on stove in there? It's like the topa topper right there. You got a sink and stove. Rat poop. Ew. Nice. Oh, yes. Super cool rat's nest. Are we going to Bert G. Homestead? Is that the next location? I have no idea. Bert G. Think Julian, probably a meth lab? Probably a meth lab. While fighting in Europe during World War I, Bert Smith was exposed to a poison gas used during the war. He returned to the United States with scarred lungs and eventually moved to the Mojave Desert in the late 1920s. Bert built this rock house and started living here in 1929 in a desperate attempt to regain his health. He only expected to survive a short time, but he lived here until 1954, an entire 25 years later. In 1981, an artist by the name of Carl Faber set up his art business at the Rock House. Four-wheel drive trips had become a popular activity and Carl took advantage of the passing traffic to sell his art. Carl lived at the Rock House for five years and then later moved to a nearby property and continued to sell his art. All right, so we made it to Rock House. A guy named Bert G. Smith lived here. I guess he fought in the war got sick, lived here for 25 years. Pretty awesome, pretty awesome spot. He's got a great view of the valley here, or the wash. And behind me, there's this, where'd the mountain go? There's a really cool mountain. Maybe I'll show you guys, maybe not. Anyways, I'm here with Julian. He's peeking inside the, uh, the house. Dude, take a look. It's open? No way, dude. Sick. I don't think this has ever been opened, or if it's supposed to be opened. Yeah. Come in here. Carbon monoxide detector. That's important. N95 mask, because, you know, the vid might get you way out in the middle of the freaking Mojave. Tons of little rat boobies. No way. Set, dude. Is there like a solar setup in here? Look at this battery setup, bro. Huh. What is that, like a, a circuit breaker right there? Should I flip it? Uh. Yeah. Nothing? Huh. There's lights. Why is this all open, dude? All the videos I've seen. It hasn't been open. Weird, I don't know. Yeah. Two miles west of here and I can see this place. Should I read it? I think you should read it. I'm two miles west of here and I can see this place with binoculars. If you're just looking around, that's okay. But I'm tired of fixing damage from attempted break-ins. If I catch you in that, I'm going to be hostile. Carl Faber. All right, so not only did Bert have this awesome rock house, awesome view, 
he had a spring right behind his house. Pretty, pretty awesome. This is part of the network of precious water sources in the desert. Rock Spring was used by native tribes, early explorers, the US Army, and settlers crossing the Mojave Desert. Although water is not always visible here, during rainy years, water flows as a stream for a short distance. So it's pretty cool. Middle of the desert, there's a spring. That's gonna wrap up Rock House. No idea what's next, but should be interesting. Excuse me, sir. I think the government made this hole, brother. We better get out of here. This is the government hole? Julian! Dude, whoa, holy shit. There you are. It's crazy. What's in there, dude? Are you in the government hole? No. Sounds like a conspiracy. Oh, ticky, 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 ticky. I'm not at liberty to discuss. It's beyond my pay grade. It's like a windmill. Oh, that. Yeah, no, that's that's fine. You can talk about that. I can talk about that. That is a, that is a classic windmill. I believe it was built by uh, General Custard in 1902. Uh, <laughs> that is not true. <laughs> That's what? TV up the truck. <laughs> After finally escaping from the government hole, we crossed over Kelso Sima Road and continued the journey on. Mojave Indians used a network of pathways to cross the Mojave Desert to reach the Pacific Coast from their homes along the Colorado River. The routes became a military wagon road in 1859 when Fort Mojave on the Colorado River was established. His travel route remained a major link between Los Angeles and points east until a railway was completed across the desert in 1883. In earlier times, Marl Springs was a very important stopping point on the Mojave Road. It was a desolate stretch 30 miles east of Soda Springs and 18 miles west of Government Holes. Unfortunately, we saw no water here. Here it is, the Mojave Road mailbox. Now there's supposed to be a little guidebook in here that you're supposed to sign with your name, and the date, possibly. Pretty cool. Now there's a bunch of stuff in here. Yeah. We got beers. If you take something, you're supposed to leave something. Little duck. All kinds of snacks and stuff. Anyways, we're gonna sign the book and throw some Johnny Taco stickers in inside and proceed on to the next location. There's supposed to be something around here called the Frog Shrine, I believe. So we gotta find that also. There it goes. All right, sign this thing. Welcome to the Mojave Road mailbox number one. Yep, hope you're enjoying your travels. Cool. Let's go to this blank page. All right. Johnny Taco, outdoors. There it is. Just sign in the, sign in the booklet right here under Johnny Taco. Have you guys ever seen a frog shrine in the middle of the Mojave Desert? Well, there's one right here. We're gonna go check it out. It's probably gonna be a little creepy. No, just super random stuff out here. It's pretty cool, there's tons of history out here. Makes it really cool 
from starting in Laughlin all the way to here the terrain has just changed a bunch and yeah it's super beautiful and I'm now looking at the frog shrine check it out Well, you gonna add your frog? I don't have a frog, dude. <laughs> now you do, buddy. Thank you. And we do too. No way. <laughs> yep. Yes. <laughs> dude, where should we put him? I think mine wants to go on this reef. You know what? It's pretty fitting. I'm gonna put this little guy we're gonna put them on top. All right, so we made it to Lava Tubes. Let's go check it out. There it is. That's where the light shines in. Don't trip. Oh God, I don't have any. Lava tubes, pretty awesome. A little natural skylight right here, beautiful. All right, so from here, we are going to go find camp. We'll see you guys at camp. Not 100% where we're gonna camp yet, but stay tuned. So we are exploring this mine up here. It's called Aiken Mine. We're probably going to camp up here. It's about 2.30 p.m. Sounds like a good time to camp. There's so much to check out right here. So we're gonna go check it out. All right, so just up the road a little ways, there's all these, uh, I don't even know what you call them little conveyor belts. It's pretty awesome. There's like different uh, shafts. There's like one, two, three, four, four shafts and like one, two, three, four, five, six different conveyor belts right here. It's pretty cool. We're gonna walk around and check it out. All right, so I just wanna show you guys, this is what I was looking at. There's a little conveyor there, there, shaft, shaft, conveyor and shaft. I'm totally messing up the lingo here. Miners dug into one of the cinder cones and supplied cinder to the building industry. Much of the cinder production went into something rather famous, the construction of the Las Vegas Strip. Of all the cinder used to build the walkway of the strip, 70% of it came from this mine. Aiken Cinder Mine, once a bustling modern mining operation, the operators of this mine abruptly shut it down in 1990 and walked away, leaving all their equipment behind. thing gonna give out on me? This is pretty sketchy. Oh my gosh. How? F Dude, we're like 30 feet in the air. I'm scared of heights, buddy. Well, today's your lucky day. You're gonna conquer your fears. Wow.
we're camping right up here and we have all this miners equipment right below us which looks super awesome check this thing out caterpillar looks like a caterpillar motor I don't know if it's from a tractor or probably from a tractor or something, huh? Let's go see. This is like the operation center right here. All right. So earlier when you saw Julie and I walking across that little conveyor belt, it was this one right here. So you can see like how high it actually is. Right, let's check this out. What does that mean? Is it from a movie? Hey, what's dance Emma Goldman? I have no idea. That's what I was wondering. No idea. Comment below if you know what that means. This is pretty awesome. Pretty cool. I should like some big, big breakers or something. Looks like people cut a bunch of stuff out of here. I knew he was up there. Whoa, it moved. Not a bad place to camp, man. Yeah, not bad. All right, you guys. Day number two was a success. Danny made some delicious shrimp tacos. Delicious shrimp tacos. Is that not Jess? Uh, no, no. Oh, okay. I'm just being an asshole. <laughs> and yeah, that's about it. So, uh, how do you think the trip has gone so far? It's been cool. It's been a lot of driving. But it's been a lot of fun. It has. Got to stay at some pretty cool places. Like this place is pretty awesome. Got to um, today put some put some frogs. Frogs, on yeah. The frog shrine. Yeah, you surprised me with the frog. Yeah, man. I surprised you with the frog. It's been a lot of frogs, but that downhill <laughs> section was like <laughs> the best part of the day, though. That was fun. That really steep. Yeah. Part we were sliding down. Yeah, that one was cool. It's been successful. Successful for sure. Though. What do you think? <clears throat> some tea. Some, Relax. some tea for sure. Yeah. And then nice early night tonight. Wake up early and freaking hit the, hit road. the road. Yeah. Day three. Day three we coming up. We still got, uh, I think like four or five cool places to see. Yeah. So then we'll complete the 135 mile Mojave Road trip next Sunday. We'll see you guys there.